I will personally eat your ass, and then I will look you right in the eyes, and I will eat your ass. I think that was pretty good. Uh, Sony, if, if you ever want another All-Stars announcer, you know, maybe for a re-release or a sequel even, I'm right here. Just hit me in those DMs, baby. Hey, everybody. Axro here, back with another wave of retardation. Today, I want to mix up our formula a little bit by talking about something that we don't typically discuss because it makes me look like a fucking loser. And we all know that I ain't no, I ain't no little dick nigga. I'm a, I'm a fucking big boy. Got bitches on my dick 24/7. Today, we're here to discuss video games. Xro, I ain't know you were a game reviewer. When did this happen? When did you start up this business? I'm not, but shut the fuck up anyways, because this is my show, and I'll do whatever the hell I want with it. With the recent announcement that Smash 5 will soon be entering into our atmosphere, a lot of people are in celebration and are widely anticipating its release, and why wouldn't they? Smash has been one of the most consistently good franchises Nintendo has ever put out, uh, probably in their entire history as well as being one of the most replayable too. But I'm not here to bathe in the success of Smash Brothers. Rather, I am here to report the defeat of All-Stars. On this episode, I want to look in the PlayStation All-Stars, the rise, the fall, and the decay of such an interesting concept gone to waste. I want to see Sony's take on competition. I want to see if they truly rose to the top and they just went underappreciated amongst their own fan base. Short answer is, uh, they, they didn't. Almost everything in All-Stars is fucking boring. So without further ado, uh, let's dive into it all and find out why PlayStation All-Stars failed and died over time. In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. The police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. The first and biggest disappointment that All-Stars presented to us was the roster. However, before I get into the roster itself, I feel as if it's appropriate to go into depth about PlayStation's history, as I feel as if it's an important aspect to understanding why the roster is so dog shit disappointing. You see, back in the 90s, we saw the first actual console wars play out between Nintendo and Sega. Nintendo had held a monopoly on the gaming market in the 80s, even having some companies sign exclusive rights to make games only for Nintendo for a while. But that all changed when Sega brought forth their ace in the hole. Sonic the Hedgehog. It's very easy to see how Sonic got as popular as he did, as he was presented with a lot of attitude and excellent advertising campaign thanks to Sega of America. Good job America, you did something right for once. However, as we transition from the early to mid 90s, Sega began to have more and more failures than successes. It had seemed as if Sega had won the battle, but Nintendo was winning the war. And the closer we got to the late 90s, the more Nintendo had begun to win back their monopoly that they held over the industry from the decade before. Enter the PlayStation. A console made by a company who was not only competing against Nintendo, the biggest gaming company in the world at that point, but also had no history with making any game consoles of the sort. PlayStation couldn't have come at a more competitive time in the gaming market, and this was a huge risk considering this was the first console Sony had ever put out. The closest thing Sony had before this moment that was related to a console in any way, shape, or form was the Philips CDI, which is considered to be one of the biggest failures in gaming history. Nice of the princess to invite us over for a picnic, eh, Luigi? I hope she made lots of spaghetti! Yet, despite all of this, Sony still came out on top as a champion of video games. Even a year later, whenever Nintendo released the Nintendo 64, a console which had better graphics than the PS1, the PlayStation still managed to be seen as a legitimate competitor to Nintendo. Because by that point, it no longer mattered how many bits you had on your console, or the high scores you got in your games. Sony told us that it was okay to have story-driven games, that it was okay to have adventures and not worry about some arbitrary numbers at the top left hand screen of the game. Not to mention, Sony had gaming mascots that challenged even Mario and Sonic, which is an extremely tall order, mind you. They had Crash, Spyro, Raymond, 
Tomb Raider, Oddworld, Croc, Final Fantasy, Ape Escape, Tekken, Worms, Parappa, Silent Hill, Twisted Metal, Metal Gear, Tomba! And that's only scratching the surface. There's a ton of other games out there on the PS1 that are widely regarded as classic titles amongst the PlayStation fanbase. And that's not even getting into the PS2 either, which has so many iconic characters within itself. So tell me, now that you're aware of PlayStation's significance in the gaming industry, uh, why does the roster of All-Stars so poorly reflect this? I mean, it's not the worst roster I've ever seen, but considering how you're going up against this? Not to mention, PlayStation has damn well made its mark on gaming territory at this point, so why is the roster so tiny and flaccid? If you have ever played this game with anyone, whether that's your gay best friend to your left, or even anyone online, you'll probably notice how they'll always choose the same four characters. This is because there's not a lot of interesting options to choose from. Oh man, oh man can't, can't wait, wait to play as one, one of the eight, eight realistic, realistic looking, looking characters, characters surrounded by goofy, by goofy cartoon, cartoon characters. characters. That, that sounds, sounds like, like such a fun, fun variation, variation of characters. characters. Some of these characters don't even make sense either. Like, why the fuck is Big Daddy from Bioshock here? but you weren't even able to land the rights to use Crash Bandicoot or Spyro? You know, the two iconic characters who made you? That's like having Smash Brothers without Mario. Who the fuck would pay for that? Even if you don't use Mario, you still expect Mario at the roster. Whenever you actually look up PlayStation All-Star roster and go to Google Images, you're going to be bombarded with all these fan-made edits that add so many different characters to the roster. In fact, I counted seven count you seven fan-made edits before I got to an actual screenshot of the in-game character selection screen. I assume this is because that's just how many people were disappointed with the actual uh, variety of these characters in the game? That's just my theory, but seriously, this fucking- th this is- it's so fucking small. <laughs> It's bad enough that the character selection sucks in this game, but what makes matters worse is just the weird flow of this game and how it feels. You see, you have characters like Big Daddy who move slow and awkwardly, but then you get Jack and Daxter, and they, and they, and they control like fucking butter on ice. There really isn't that much balanced control in these games, and that can be a major issue to more hardcore players. Even the big slow characters in Smash like King Dedede or Bowser have at least enough fluidity to them to feel appropriate in such a fast-paced environment. The problem with All-Stars is that there's either too much weight or no weight at all, and that is a gigantic issue. People really don't underline the importance of good control schemes in games, when in reality, it can break the entire flow of immersion within the universe that the game is trying to set up. This isn't the only unbalanced thing in the game, however. Characters can also be pretty unbalanced within their abilities and powers. I mean, who the fuck doesn't main Kratos? He has the power of, like, fucking six Hurricane Katrinas j just at the press of a fucking A button. He is so goddamn overpowered. It <laughs> mm. Look at how fast my special is charging. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah what? Yeah, this is my level three. <laughs> I'm... Okay. Yeah. See, the team that made God of War had a special order that it needs to be... Oh. Kratos has to be the best character, otherwise he won't be in, so they said okay. You also have this level up system that reenacts a final smash based on how good you did as a player that you can set off with a button press. This is something I'll go more into depth with here soon, but it's another example of how unbalanced certain sequences can be. Some kill you based on your health, as in, if you have enough health, you won't be cream pied by the special attacks as badly as other people who have less health. But then you have other special attacks that kill you no matter where you are in the game, no matter your health, no matter how good you do as a player. Okay, so let me explain. I kind of fucked up here by assuming there was some sort of health system in the game, which there really isn't. So I'm just gonna go over that real quick. Firstly, there is no health system, and I don't know why I said there was, but fact of the matter is there's a progression system. It's, there's no health system here. Progression system is basically just pushing you to activate your smash or your super, I guess, in this game. I don't fucking know. However, you still have some supers that are based around where you are in the game, because once you get to level 3 supers, you're basically just a one-hit KO target at that point. Some supers are cutscenes which kill you no matter where you are in the map, and other ones just depend on your mobility in the game and how you're able to avoid that final super. I almost called it a smash again, god damn it. So yeah, that's all. Uh, 
Still, still a pretty fucking unbalanced system. Good night, America. Nothing really feels balanced or well thought out in this game, and that's the most crippling aspect of the of, of the game. It not only creates an inconsistent flow of the game, but that in turn ruins the experience. <laughs> Now, admittedly, I do like the idea of All-Star System more so than Smash Brothers. In Smash Brothers, you hit a fucking ball, and if you hit it enough times, you become Super, Super Saiyan God. Yeah. The idea of All-Star System, however, is based on how good you do as a player, and I really like that idea. I think it's far more justified than just playing with a fucking floating beach ball for three minutes. But the issue comes in the execution. You see, the system should be a really rewarding thing based off of your skills and ability as a player. However, special attacks fall so bad goddamn flat, have little or no impact to them, and are as unengaging as possible. A lot of them are cutscenes. They're not even very impressive cutscenes either. And the few actually interactive special attacks are, are just so fucking lame. Sly Cooper takes pictures. Big Daddy floods the level and walks around and just casually stabs people. Fat Princess stands around as random bombs are just being dropped. Do you see the issue with this yet? It's fucking boring. Bowser turns into a giant fucking mega death fuck Godzilla. Mario drops the biggest Kamehameha the size of fucking Jupiter. Mega Man gets every single incarnation of himself and all of them join together to blast a huge fucking death beam of shit onto whoever gets in the way. Sly Cooper takes pictures. <coughs> there were a lot of opportunities to do interesting and unique things too. Like, why does Parappa go into a cutscene and then sing and everyone dies? Why not make him have to hit the right buttons in sync with the song like the original? And the more you hit the buttons in time, the more effective the attack is. You know, like what Donkey Kong does in Smash 4. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of funny. Nintendo took a beloved character that acted as an icon for Nintendo throughout a majority of its history, and his final Smash was some callback reference to some obscure DS game. Sony couldn't even take the core gameplay elements of an essential figure of a popular genre during the late 90s and early 2000s and reincorporate it back into a fighting game, despite all the opportunities they had at it. It's almost trying to tell you something. It's almost as if uh, Nintendo actually cares about their characters. And you know, I get it. This is a reward to the player for all that hard work. But why should I even care to play it anymore if I'm not able to fucking destroy everyone, but instead it's a cutscene I watch in which my character just destroys everyone anyways in the least interesting way possible? What's the point of making your fucking cake if you can't eat it either? That's just stupid. It once again kills the flow to the entire game and gives you a poor motivation for why you should even keep playing. Because, I mean, why bother at this point? Nothing interesting or fun is going to happen anyways, so... Like, why even fucking poke it with the stick? Before I get into my last point, I'm going to talk about the presentation overall. While I like the main theme of the game, that tying back into the home screen of the PS3, the overall presentation just feels really fucking boring while simultaneously being annoying during stages. There's not a lot that make these characters stand out, and there's a lot of flat and bland color usage across stages. I mean, even Nintendo will sometimes make slight alterations to the color palette of a character to make them pop out more, but All-Stars tries to be more faithful to the original designs, which really clash against other art styles throughout the game. And not in a good way. The stages that do actually have a vibrant and memorable color scheme are usually interrupted by game crossovers that once again reinstate this flat and bland realistic look of the game. It stands out the most. It'd be a shame if a game crossovered with it and made it look less interesting. <laughs> oh, Here, now the stage no, got the good. Number next, do you think maybe that detailed background makes it harder for you to see? Yeah, yeah. a little bit. I can camouflage myself in it. Look, <laughs> you can barely yeah. even see me. Wow. <laughs> you Which is... Another fucking issue. I like the idea of these game crossovers between stages, but why couldn't this have been optional or even customization of it? This gimmick gets real fucking annoying, real fast, and with no option to filter it out, it makes the game that much more infuriating. Not to mention, people select the Parappa stage to fucking play in the dojo, not to play in the Metal Gear universe. I don't even fucking care what's happening there right now. Right now, I want to play with fucking Onion Boy here. It's just an annoying feature that should have either been optional or taken out entirely. You also have the impact of each hit you throw. It's not too bad for the most part, but like I said, 
that impact is just flat out gone during the special attacks, and it makes your motivations to activate those special attacks so much weaker. Not to mention, people don't go flying off of stages like in Smash Brothers. They kinda just dissolve on stage like Thanos just took a stroll through the PlayStation universe. And it really lacks that just just that gut feeling you get. And with the already flat presentation, it doesn't help the game to stand out all that well visually. Also hurting the game because once again, the roster has like four interesting characters. Kinda fuck themselves. So, by this point you may be asking, what is the future of this franchise, and when will they be able to make another game? Well, that's the thing. It's entirely possible that there never will be another game. The advantage that Nintendo has with Smash Bros. is just the fact that they own the rights to almost all of these characters, because they own most of the characters. And while there's a few characters that they had to go out of their way to get the license to, for the most part, Nintendo will forever have the ability to pump out Smash games while keeping the main characters intact because they own those characters. For Sony, they had to get the license to all the characters already in the game, and I imagine with so many characters from huge studios, that would be an expensive fee to pay off over time. Realistically speaking, that's probably why Crash Bandicoot or Spyro can return, because they were way too expensive, and I'd imagine with a game that has such a large amount of money to make back from getting the rights to all these characters in the first place, the game would have to do phenomenal, both critically and financially. However, fact of the matter is, it didn't do that. Yeah, sure, it got decent reviews at the time, but where does it stand now? Why is it that you don't see any tournaments being held on it? Why don't you ever hear anyone talk about it? It's not even that old of a game, after all, and people still talk about Melee, so why not All-Stars? It doesn't have the longevity that Smash does, and because of that, this great concept of a game will likely never see the light of day in a very long time. This was honestly a great idea of a game, to make a Smash-like scenario but with PlayStation characters, but it just didn't pan out because it wasn't put in the right hands, and the consequence of that, ultimately, is not only the death of a franchise, but the death of a concept too. All Stars just wasn't a game that could deliver all the promises it made due to lack of competence as well as money, and because of that, it will forever remain in the shadows of Nintendo's far more superior franchise. Whether this will one day be picked up again for another round, or if it will always be the butt of a joke, this is x telling you to fuck off and don't buy this game. Actually, before I end off this video, there's an important announcement I'd like to make. I'm not going to be able to make videos throughout all of July uh, due to personal reasons, so I'd just like to say thank you all uh, to the people who continue to support my dumb nonsense throughout each video, and I greatly appreciate any and all of what you guys have to say about my content. So this is x -Row. I'll see you in about a month or so, and uh, good night America. Good night, Chicago. Bye-bye.